We are glad that you have joined us as we worship today from St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Now, how shall we love the Lord our God who has poured out such love upon us? Well, we shall love God with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls, and all of our spirits. And how shall we demonstrate this love? by living that love in all that we do, all that we think, and all that we say. So let us praise God, who has loved us totally. Let us do what we have gathered to do. Let us worship God. And now, in these moments of prayer, let us center ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our spirits around the presence of God that is definitely in our midst. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and merciful God, God of the resurrection, we thank you for the new life that you have given Jesus and all who follow him. Through the power of your Spirit, inspire us to make a leap of faith into your loving arms. And may we believe the words of Scripture when they speak of your victory over death. And may we accept the promises you make for the future. O oh God, we praise you for your love, for your joy, and for the wonderful living hope that is present in our lives, a hope that points us to a future that we cannot see, but we believe that you will guide us through. We pray this prayer as we gather in your name. Amen. Today, our scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 21. Now, this conversation takes place in the upper room at what we commonly refer to as the Last Supper. Jesus is preparing the disciples for what is coming. Now, in the beginning of the conversation, Jesus begins by emphasizing belief. But in the part of the conversation we're going to hear today, Jesus' emphasis shifts to love. And in this conversation, Jesus introduces two great and exciting and challenging ideas. So, hear these words now from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 21, as they come to us from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Hear these words from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him 
because he abides in you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't think anyone would really argue with the statement that Jesus was certainly a man on a mission. Jesus spent his life healing the sick, feeding the hungry, giving sight to the blind, raising the dead, washing the feet of his disciples, and then encouraging them, strongly encouraging them to love one another. Jesus spent his life showing the way to God. Jesus' mission was very clear. But what would Jesus' mission statement be? Because in today's world, we believe that everyone, from religious organizations to nonprofits to, to big businesses, they need a mission statement. What is a mission statement anyway? Well, it should be an expression of purpose something to inspire and nurture the human spirit. A mission statement should be something that tells others what you're all about. You know, at one time, Starbucks, that little coffee shop on the corner, their mission statement was one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. I think we can all agree, mission accomplished. But mission statements are no laughing matter. They are big business. Hiring someone to capture a company's core values and purpose can cost a pretty large chunk of change. A buyer beware. Just because you spend a lot of money doesn't guarantee that your statement is going to be a success. Sometimes those core values and goals and purposes wind up sounding very complex, a little boring, and oftentimes very preachy. Case in point, Albertsons. Albertsons is a food and drug retailer whose home base is located in Boise, Idaho. With a team of more than 325,000 employees in the year 2020, Albertsons has 2,253 locations in 35 states, which makes them the second largest, largest supermarket chain in the United States of America. Albertsons' company slogan, helping make your life easier. Not bad. Their mission statement? Not so much. This is the mission statement of Albertsons. Guided by relentless focus on our five imperatives, we will constantly strive to implement the critical initiatives required to achieve our vision. In doing this, we will deliver operational excellence in every corner of the company and meet or exceed our commitments to the many constituents we serve. All of our long-term strategies and short-term actions will be molded by a set of core values that are shared by each and every associate. Whoa. Wait a minute. 
What kind of store was this again? It's easy to get caught in the mire. Now, if we as followers of Jesus are going to have a mission statement, we need to make sure that it's not going to be complex and boring. I trust that we can do better than what we just heard. As a matter of fact, Kevin Starr, who leads the Malago Foundation, which is a socially minded organization that finds, funds, advises, and promotes organizations with scalable solutions to poverty, says that anyone should be able to express their mission in no more than eight words. That's right, eight words a verb, a target, and an outcome. Start with a strong action word. Name the target of the work and describe the outcome. A very good example is get clean water to poor people. This is the mission statement of a company called Aquaya, which is a nonprofit research and consulting organization that is dedicated to advancing global health through universal access to safe water and sanitation. So mission statements are pretty important. What should be included in a mission statement for a follower of Jesus? Well, hello again. You know how much I love to talk with you every week, so it's good to be here with you. I'm here with Jesus. We're both still wearing our masks because we're inside, so we want to make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe, but also the other people around us. But I'm going to take my mask off so you might be able to hear me just a little bit better when we talk this today. So I have something that I want to show you, and I want to show you these three things, and I want to see if you can guess what kind of pet I have, okay? So the very first thing I'm gonna show you is a brush, right? This is a pet brush. It, it has like this side that's kind of prickly, kind of prickly there, and then this side that's really kind of smooth. And you can see there's even some animal hair in there because we use this brush on our pet to help them keep their fur clean and it just makes them happy, right? Now the second thing I want to show you is this silly looking thing that you hang on a doorknob, right? And it's got this that you can kind of play with. And then this is very rough. You can put nails in it and you can kind of scratch on it. And there's a certain animal that really likes to scratch on things like this. Now, if you haven't guessed already, I think this last thing is going to be, is going to give it away, right? Because what I have is this which is a can of cat food. That's right, so I have a cat as a pet. Actually, I have three cats as a pet. We have Cleo, we have Souvenir, and we have Nico, three cats. And all of these things help us to take care of our cats, right? Pet them and keep their fur clean, and we feed them so that they don't get hungry, make sure they have water as well, and we give them this to play and, you know, scratch their nails on. Now, maybe you have a pet too. Do you have a pet? Maybe you have a dog, and if you have a dog, you probably have dog food. You might have a brush. You can use a brush on a dog, but maybe you have a leash, and you take the dog for a walk, right? All of these things that we have to take care of our pets is a way for us to show them that we love them, right? Taking care of your pet helps your pet to know that you love them. And we love our pets very, very much, don't we? Yes, we do. So I wanna to talk to you about, because today in the scripture that I'm reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking about how you can love him. And Jesus says, if you love me, 
you'll keep my commands, which means if you love me, then you'll do the things that I ask you to do. So let's think about the things that Jesus asks us to do. Jesus asks us to believe in God. Jesus asks us to pray for others. God asks us to feed people who are hungry and give people who are thirsty something to drink. And if people don't have clothes, Jesus asks us to give, us, give them clothes. Jesus also asks us to visit people who aren't feeling very well. There's a lot of things that Jesus asks us to do. And you know what? That gives us a lot of ways for us to show Jesus that we love him. Just like we use all of these things to show our pets that we love them, we can do the things that Jesus tells us to do, and then Jesus knows that we love him as well. And that's very, very important because we know that when we love Jesus, then other people can feel God's love and they will come to love Jesus as well. It's just exciting to be a follower of Jesus, isn't it? I think it is. How about if we say a prayer that Jesus will help us hear what he asks us to do and then with love in our hearts, do the things Jesus asks us to do so that Jesus knows all the time that we love him. All right, will you pray with me? You know how I like to pray probably. I like to say the words first and then you repeat after me. Will you do that today? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for our pets and the things you give us to help them know that we love them. We also thank you for Jesus. And we pray that we will live our lives doing what Jesus asks us so that Jesus knows we love him too. Hear all of our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. I will talk with you again very soon. So what would be included in a mission statement for a follower of Jesus? Well, I believe that a close look at today's passage from the Gospel of John reveals that it's easy to see how a mission statement can become a wash in jargon and confusion. There's just so much to say. Just look at what Jesus reveals in today's text. Love me, do what I tell you, I'm sending another, you won't be orphaned, abide in God, soon you will no longer see me. The temptation is to try to say it all. Remember, the marks of an effective mission statement are a verb, a target, an outcome, all in eight words. Okay. So let's start with the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verse 15, right where we started today. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's a good start, but it exceeds the eight-word limit. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. Yes, Jesus is assuring the disciples that they will see him after his death. And then Jesus predicts this crazy future marked by this amazing intimacy between God, Jesus, and Jesus' followers. Then Jesus circles back to where he began, and it's an important connection. Jesus makes a connection between loving him and keeping his commandments. Wow! So Jesus connects living right with loving right. Now, for many, loving and commandment keeping are two very different approaches to the Christian faith. 
but for Jesus, they are one and the same. Wait, that's a good start to an authentic Christian mission statement. We can trim this down. How about love Jesus, do the right thing, receive the spirit of truth? Still too many words. Okay, let's focus on a verb, a target, and an outcome. Our verb is love. What stronger verb could there possibly be? We also have a clear target as well, don't we? A community or the creation of a community who loves Jesus and keeps his commandments and who will experience a truly amazing intimacy with God and Jesus. And what about the outcome to these efforts? To receive the Holy Spirit. I think this mission statement is slowly emerging. Love Jesus, keep his commands, receive the Spirit. A verb, a target, an outcome. All in eight words. This is our mission to spend our lives, to become a community of people who love Jesus and do what Jesus says. This is complementary, not contradictory. It's two sides to the same spiritual coin, really revealing both affection and obedience. If we can make this connection then we will be in a position to receive the Holy Spirit. So, how do we do it? We need to take time every day to pray so that we can feel God's forgiving and healing love. Today, we come as a people who have been tested by the various trials in life. We come as a people who are flawed, yes, yet knowing that God not only receives us, but also claims us as children of God. So as we go to God in prayer, let us empty ourselves of the things that concern us and burden us and distract us from God. And may we keep our hearts and minds open to God's redeeming mercy and abiding love. Let us pray. O most powerful God, Lord of love, you have asked us to keep your commandments in your life, you demonstrated the power of love to effect healing, redemption, and hope in the lives of all your people. Yet we are so unsure of the gifts that you have given us for ministry. And we wonder if we can really do what you ask us to do. We certainly are a strange mixture of God. We are arrogant in our demands of your mercy and timid in our awareness of the blessings and gifts that you have given to us. That's why we're here today. We really want to sense your presence and receive courage to truly be your people in this world, this world that you have loaned us. Remind us when we bring names and circumstances before your throne of grace, that we are also bringing our own needs and concerns. And we pray that you will lay your healing hand upon the hearts and spirits of the people that we mention and lift up to you in our lives. And, O oh God, we also, we place our lives and our trust in you. 
So today, O oh God, give us a spirit of patience and willingness to be ready to hear your voice. Strengthen us for the ministries of love and hope that you have placed before us. May we continue to walk in the way that leads to life, the way that has been shown to us through your Son, our Savior, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, O oh God, as your faithful people, hear us as we raise our concerns to you. Hear us as we lift our lives to you. Hear us as we raise our voices together, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, praying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are invited to give witness to the hope that sustains us. We are invited to give witness to the love and presence of God that upholds us all. Our offerings are just that, because through our offerings, we look to highlight the sustaining hope of God in our lives, and through the ministries of the church, make this hope available for anyone. Who needs it? There are many ways that you can support the ministries of St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. You can text the amount you would like to give to 856-656-4103, and you will receive a return text telling you how to complete that transaction. Or you can go to our website, www.saumc nj.org and click on the Give tab and you will be taken through the steps you need to make to give an online offering. Or you can place your offering in an envelope and mail it to our physical address, 327 Marlton Pike West, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08002. And may God, the giver of all gifts, know how grateful we are for every blessing in our life and for the Spirit's presence that is with us throughout all of life, in our joys and in our fears, in our hopes, and even in our dreads. And we pray that through our gifts and through the lives that we live, that God will be revealed and that people may find their true home in God's love. Amen. So how do we do it? Well, first, we love Jesus. Now, it took me many, many years, but I have become very open about the sexual abuse I suffered at the hands of a youth minister in my early teens. I have been very frank about how I thought through some horrible theology that says things like, everything happens for a reason, and God is behind everything that happens. Through that, I thought that if God caused this to happen, with my deep, pain-filled hurt, then how could I ever love God? Trust God. Follow Jesus. Because God certainly could not love me. It wasn't until 
a minister in a faith community where I was worshiping, to whom I will forever be grateful. It wasn't until this minister helped me to realize that God wasn't behind the pain or the hurt or the darkness, but that God was in every tear. Jesus was in every tear. His words, his healing words, not mine. And suddenly I realized, as never before, the love of Jesus. The words were true. Jesus loved me first. When this happens, when we realize this, then we need to do the right thing. We need to keep Jesus' commands, to do what Jesus says. It doesn't mean that we will suddenly achieve some state of moral perfection, something we have to work at. And it does mean, though, that it is time for us to respond to Jesus' love, to desire to live a life that is organized around a new commandment. Love one another, no matter what. John 13, 35 says it this way. By this, by loving one another, others will know, the world will know that you are my disciples. Now, as we said, mission statements can easily get bogged down in complexity, but the opposite is also true. When I was younger, there was a bumper sticker that read, Honk if you love Jesus. That might be a little too simple because anyone can honk. If you love Jesus, you keep Jesus' commands. You do what Jesus says. Don't just say the words. Honks and words come very easy. It's the follow-through that's challenging. So the final phrase of our mission statement is about a gift. And we all love to receive gifts, don't we? Receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Have you ever spent time in the midst of people who have received the Spirit? I have, and I bet you have as well. Because the outcome of a loving relationship with Jesus and doing what Jesus says will land you in a community of faith. A community of faith where you will experience the Spirit. Where you will experience the Spirit, the power of the Spirit in the midst of or in spite of struggles pain, uncertainty, cancer, Alzheimer's, autism, divorce, unemployment, in the midst of the world's darkness, in, in the midst of your darkness, you will feel safe and happy, and most importantly, you will feel loved. That's what it means to experience the fullness of the Spirit. God's advocate, God's comforter, God's counselor, the one that Jesus promised to come and guide us through this life. This is our mission statement. Those who follow Jesus, this is our purpose. Love Jesus, keep his commands, receive the Spirit. No jargon, no gobbledygook, a verb, a target, and an outcome. Just eight words, love Jesus, keep his commands, receive the Spirit, 
eight words of authentic Christian reality. Once again, we have discovered that we are a community of faith, a spirit-filled community of faith, following Christ with a specific mission. Because wherever we are, we are in God. Wherever we are, we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Wherever we are, the spirit abides with us and in us. So do all that you can to stay well. Remember to constantly be kind. Continue to protect yourself and others by wearing a mask, specifically in places and situations where they are required. Continue to keep a safe distance between yourself and others. And now we all can. So get the COVID vaccine and encourage those around you to do the same. Because we go forth in peace and in hope, upheld by God in every way. So let us go forth in faithfulness and trust. And may all see God's love in and through us. Amen.